Hey, good morning. I'm your host, Stanley Dietrich, with um, Imagination, The Awakening. And I have my guest here again, Tracy Borson from TLB Coaching and Events. And today we are going to talk about the idea of having a blank slate and the power of having a blank slate. And um, just before I get too far into this, um, if you want, go to um, make comments. You can check it out. Leave a comment. Tell us what you think about this. Um, if there's anything else that you'd like covered, I've got tons of topics, but I also want to um, be relevant to the listeners and, and put a comment in there. If there's something that you didn't like, hey, I'm all welcome, okay? Um, they say that uh, if you, you don't have haters, you don't have a platform. So um, I'm also inviting the haters. So anyway. <laughs> it might have been me who said um, that. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. You know, and, and I've always had haters, and I just, I encourage them, um, and they hate that. So anyway. <laughs> so today, the topic is having a blank slate. And why is this so important? Um, and as I present that question, Tracy, what is what is the thought that comes to your mind as you think about a blank slate? I mean, simply for me, it feels like a new day. <laughs> I feel like a new day is like new opportunities, new possibilities. And it's interesting because last week we were talking about how last week at some point was the official give up on your new year's resolutions yeah. day. Um, and I've always found it really interesting. Even the concept of like, we pick one day in the entire year where we allow ourselves to reset things. So we say whoever created the calendar and to be fair, there's lots of different calendars that don't all start on the same day. Um, there's, we say, okay, that's the one day in a year that we can like turn stuff around and do something new. And really, we could do that every day. Yeah. <laughs> the possibility exists. So for me, it's just like a new day. And Samina is sharing in the chat a fresh look. I like that um, definition as well. Yes. And, and so, you know, the idea is that the, the only prerequisite to have a blank slate is that you wake up. That's really, actually, you probably have um, a blank slate when if you don't wake up and it may be better than what you imagine. Uh, but the idea of, of, of a blank slate and starting again, not starting over, but starting again. And, and I had a conversation with um, a young man last night and he said, you know, I'm starting from scratch. And I said, you can't start from scratch. It's impossible to start from scratch because to start from scratch means to start from nothing. And you are something already. All the experiences that you have, all the experiences that you've, that you've had and all the experiences that are awaiting for you are within your, your capacity. So if you take the ideas that you enjoyed and bring them into today, rather than bringing what we didn't enjoy in into the day. And this is, this is what happens most generally is that people wake up and the first thing that they think about is all the things that they have left over from yesterday. And it is that to-do list rather than the to be list mm -hmm. and the to do list is overwhelm it's suffocating it's 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 just a breakdown and it and it creates an illness rather than and i was going to i was going to um remember to have a whiteboard behind me and the the thing about it is is that as we if you can imagine this, if you can picture this in your mind, a blank slate, and then you take five different colors of, of markers and you just make a bunch of squiggly lines. Now, that's a beautiful picture when we get that from a 
one and a half or a two year old. And we think that's magic. But yet when we do that at 25 or 35 or 45 or 55, or even even younger, 65 or 75, and we we take that, we look at it and we go, that's a mess. And then what we do the next day is we post that that image back up in front of us. And we run through this process rather than just rip that off and throw it away. You know, one uh, an exercise that I have some of my clients do is I want them to write down all the bad stuff that's happened to them. All the, the ruminating thoughts that go through their mind. I want them to write it down and they will ask me, why would I do that? It's just a rehearsal of all the pain that I've experienced. And if you only listen to part of the directions, then you miss the, the, the outcome, the, the event. So when you take and you write those things down and then you look at it and you cry, you weep, you remorse, and then you take it outside, don't do it in your kitchen, and take a match and burn it. Cry your last tear over that and then burn that. And then if you can make sense out of the ashes, then I say, it's okay, go ahead and pick it back up. But you can't. When you burn that thought, when you burn that idea, now you're, you're forced to start over with a blank sheet, nothing on it. It's clear. Well, and I think this is so interesting for me because I've always been a list making person, right? And I like make a list of all the things I need to remember to do and I check off or cross off things off the list as you go. And lots of times there's leftover things on the list, right? So whether that's from a, a business perspective and I didn't get to this today, so I need to get to that tomorrow. Um, or like I was, this happened to me earlier this week. I need to schedule an eye appointment and I had requested Thursday and then they told me I couldn't have Thursday. Could I do a different time on Thursday? And I was like, nope, I can't do a different time on Thursday. So it like took like five days to actually get this appointment figured out and back and forth phone calls and all of the things. And I think it's an interesting concept to think about like accountability and how we want to like be responsible for getting things done. But at the same time, how do we balance that with the feeling of I'm carrying all this stuff over um, and the beingness of that instead of saying like, okay, dude, I still have this list of things that needs to get done. And how, if I focus on my beingness first, does that actually enable me to get those things done versus like carrying this heavy load from day to day, like, oh, and now this, and so I have to do everything I need to do today and what I didn't get done tomorrow and what I didn't get done the day before and how that like mindset impacts your ability to actually get the things done. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and, and some of those things on that list are not intended to get done. Right. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is a great point because I say this to people all the time about procrastination. I've had lots of people, especially in my corporate life, who would come to me and be like, oh, I just am a procrastinator. It's who I am, right? Like, I, I, And I always think that if something is being procrastinated enough, that probably means it didn't need to get done in the first place. And more so the value is to look at, well, why am I never doing that activity? Because I don't deem that it has any value is usually the reason. And so is that procrastination or is that good decision making? <laughs> well, that, that could be another conversation because I think <laughs> procrastination really is um, an expectation of, a, of an event that is not going to turn out the way that we wanted it to. Mm. And so that is the... That is the fuel of procrastination. So when we, when we have the intention or when we have the idea already in our mind that the event is going to turn out the way that we want it to, we, we do that thing. But procrastination, and like I said, this will be another talk, is 
energy that that we perceive is not going to produce what we intended it to produce so therefore we put it off because nobody look it's it's like doing the hard thing first okay i hate cold showers okay but i have a timer set by my shower and i set that timer for 16 minutes and then when it gets to four and a half minutes I know it's time to turn the water to cold. And I can't wait for that timer to go off. But I'm never excited about it. You know, I just, I'm like, oh, I can't wait. Because I know what the outcome is. The outcome is my body's gonna get acclimated to an uncomfortable situation. And I have four and a half minutes to enjoy it. Why four and a half minutes? Because at the four minute mark, my body has become acclimated to it and i'm so glad that i did it and the last 30 seconds it's like sometimes i just let the timer beep for the next minute and that takes me to five and a half minutes and then i uh, you know celebrating but as we as we understand that most of us are running on a program that is controlled by by our outside environments and those outside environments then make a personality or, 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 or a, a, a reaction. And when we react over and over in that way, we end up with results that we really didn't want. And so therefore then we say, well, I'll start tomorrow. And, you know, everybody waits till December 31st and they say, I'm going to eat all this junk food because it's the last time that I'm going to eat this stuff because 2024 is a new year. And then, you know, when you told me to have an official day and I was actually on a call with someone else that shared that same thing with me. And I was like, we got a blank slate. If, 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 if the, if we get off on a detour, whatever it is that we're doing, it is not the final judgment. Just take the off ramp and get back on. And but Stanley, how important is that is to, I use the phrase to permission to do you a lot. And I feel like there's a like permission giving piece of this, right? Like you have to give yourself permission to restart at any day to say it's February 27th. I'm going to start doing cold showers. Yeah. Right? Um, I have a friend who just got an ice bath. And so he started doing that. And then his son started doing that. And then like, it's not because they were like, okay, today is the day. Right. <laughs> and they just like made any day available to be the first day. So how important is it to like create that permission mechanism within you to be able to say any day is a day where I can start something new. Yeah, because I, I want to say that so many people put so much emphasis on the word failure because they've learned, they've been programmed from an early place, whether it was in school. You know, what does a teacher do when you get an F? She puts it in red or he puts it in red. And then what do they do? They accentuate it with red and they draw circles. Like I had this teacher that must have had an unlimited supply from Bic with the red ink pens because she drew an amount of circles. I'm like, one circle would have emphasized it. What's the need for all the circles? And I asked that question, right? Why did you have to circle it so many times? And so I got a detention for that. She was psycho, okay? And that's a true story. Um, and I know she's not living anymore. Her name is Beverly Byerly from my fourth grade um, uh, trauma. Anyway. It's interesting though, because even when you say that, right? Like from your own individual perspective, sure, I think from a societal perspective, we're taught that red is bad, right? So right. if someone writes in red on my paper that that is bad. Um, when I was early in my marketing career and we were, 
making corrections to a print piece, we would always write them in red because that uh, captures your attention, right? If you're writing on black and white, then red stands out. But why is that always used for bad things, right? We could also like <laughs> point out good things, A, in red, right? But we never do that. And it's really interesting because red as a color doesn't have that definition. Humans create that definition. Exactly. So then we see that and we interpret it as bad, but there's even an opportunity there to say like, okay, even if my fourth grade teacher meant that as like a emphasizing something was bad, do I have to take it that way? Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, one of the things that I, I say over and over is that there's no one event, no single one event or 10 events that define you for the rest of your life. You know, and, and, and I, I have, I don't speak from theory on this. I speak from a personal experience that sometimes what we can perceive or it be perceived by society as a failure is actually the catapult for our greatest successes. And, you know, everybody uses without really thinking Thomas Edison. But when you really think about, let me ask you, have you tried something 10,000 times? I have not tried anything 10,000 times and continued. I, I can't say that I have. No. And, and it can be discouraging because we allow societal rules and definitions to mitigate what our path is. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we allow that, then yeah, it's hard to start with a blank slate. So let me ask, you know, the audience, as you begin your day, what is the first thing that came to your mind? I mean, when you think about it, what was the first thing that came to your mind? It was something that you didn't do the day before, or it was something that you said from the day before, or something that someone else said from the day before that was not positive. I guarantee it, that's the truth. It's a high percentage chance. It's a very high percentage. And, and it's something, I, I wanna just share this experience briefly because now I'm going to forget his last name. And if you guys are interested, message me and I'll get it to you. But um, his name was Charles and he came to do a guest presentation um, in a group that I was in and he was, a uh, an Olympic athlete. And he came to talk about you know, daily routines and how to like, keep your spirits up and, and performance and all of these things. And he shared what I thought was conceptually very simple <laughs> in terms of a bedtime routine. Because lots of people talk about morning routines, but he was talking about a going to sleep routine. And in his practice of sharing gratitude with himself um, before he goes to sleep. And so I was like, oh, that sounds like a good thing to try. So I'm going to try that. So I did that, fall asleep. And I think like most people, like I don't really, like I don't remember falling asleep. My brain thinks lots of thoughts. I can't like 100% control the thoughts, but I specifically chose gratitude, fell asleep. When I woke up in the morning, I felt excited. <laughs> And I was like, it was almost like, and the reason I share this story is because I do feel like it was the opposite experience of what you're sharing, Stanley, which is like, I didn't wake up thinking there was anything I had to do today. It was just like a world of possibilities. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I know that I am an accountable person. So I will get the stuff done that needs to get done. But I've also had experiences where I went through entire days and got a whole bunch of stuff done. Mm -hmm. and didn't feel anything all day. Right. I just did stuff. And so this is the cool thing from a blank slate perspective is that you could say, hey, that seems like an easy thing. I'm going to try gratitude before I go to bed. And then just see, see what happens in the morning. Put a post -a note on your bedside table and be like, what are you thinking <laughs> as soon as right. you wake up? And just pay attention. Did you... Did you wake up thinking about stuff from the past? Or did you wake up thinking that this day is going to be fun? Or 
did you wake up thinking? Cause this is something that happens to me too. Cause I have to get up and I do my workout and I have to take a shower and I get Nicholas ready for school. And there's like a lot of things that have to happen in a defined amount of time. And there's days when I wake up and I'm like, oh, I wish I could just like lie here, but I can't lie here because I have to get up and I have to do all of these things. That's it's not a day full of possibilities. Then it's a day full of things. And it's really interesting to explore for yourself. Like what are the, the habits and the activities that you can do that allow yourself to create that again, possibility for a blank slate every morning. You mentioned a word and, and um, I, I just love the synergy possibilities and responsibilities. Okay. So when our, when our responsibilities override our possibilities, we run on a program mm -hmm. and, you know, we have, maybe the responsibility of making sure, you know, when my kids were little, the responsibility of making sure that they were awake, making sure that they got out to the bus stop, making sure that they were dressed and not in that order that I just said, um, you know, um, and, and we have a responsibility, yes, but we also have the responsibility to create the possibilities. You know, when I would show up, and, and have lunch with my kids. And I, I, I really enjoyed doing that on a regular basis until they said, you know, dad, this was in the middle school. You don't, you don't have to take me all the way up. You can drop me off here. And, you know, I'm not going to kiss you anymore. And um, if you didn't, if you didn't come, you know, to lunch, it's okay. <laughs> you know, and you, Think of, of making those moments, making those, those possible moments and not allowing the responsibility so much to be the motivator, but the possibility to be the motivator. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens is our responsibilities run us in a cycle. And one of the things that I do with all my clients is I tell them to drive home you know, just like I, I talked to you about brushing your teeth with your left hand. And I was on a call this morning and I was talking with a lady and, and she said this year she started brushing her teeth with her left hand. And I'm like, you know, if you go back and watch the first show that we did for this year, I mentioned that. And I think that's beautiful. That's amazing because it puts you in the present moment. And the blank slate, it really is about being in the present moment and making room for something different. And so I'll tell my clients, I'll say, drive home in a different direction. When we did that from school yesterday. Nicholas, who's five, for those of you who don't know, um, he was like, can we go on a different path home today? And I was like, yes, we can. <laughs> See, that's energy right there. Yeah. 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 And, that and it was... Mm -hmm. Would I call it the best path? I mean, we ended up going on a dirt road. The roads are pretty frozen, so it was pretty bumpy. Okay. <laughs> like, would we choose that path on a regular basis? Probably not. But that was, I think the thing, <laughs> I remember watching this movie years ago called Just Go With It, I think is what it's called. And it's like this ridiculous life scenario, but it's based on the concept of like, if someone presents you, something you have to just go with it from uh uh what's that I, I never can think of the word it's that like not stand-up comedy but the comedy where like the audience throws out examples and then the okay the like people dictionary? Just, like dictionary. no it's like whose line is it anyway okay <laughs> where like the audience will be like you're pirates and then the the actors just have to like make up a scene about being pirates it's not ad lib, something like that. Anyway, so the movie is about that. And they like all this crazy stuff ends up happening because the, the rule is like, you just have to go with it, right? At one point, one of the kids starts speaking in a British accent. And so then they make up this story about how she went to boarding school in England, which is none of it is true. <laughs> so really they're just making up lies. But it's interesting from uh, that perspective of like, how can you just go with what is presented to you in the moment? Someone just, be, it, it would be easy. It would have been easy for me to say improv. Yes. Thank you, Samina. 
<laughs> you got it. I explain it and I never can remember the name. Um, it would have been easy for me to say no to Nicholas. Right? Can we go a different way? No, we got to get home because we got to do this and we got to do that. And luckily we didn't have a time constraint, but even if we did have a time constraint, it took us like two more minutes to go a different direction, right? Like it's not a lot of time. And so what if we could play with that a little bit more from an improv point of view and just be like, oh yeah, okay, you're giving me this. I'm gonna go with that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, the, the thing of it is, <clears throat> is that we have one life to live. And I have one day at a time to live that life. I have a choice every single day that I wake up. And I know that there's somebody that will probably listen to this and say, but you don't know my life. And, and I'll say, no, I don't know your life, but I know my life. And I can tell you stories that it's not a comparison game. It's just that I took those obstacles and if I took those obstacles that made me stronger and I turned them into opportunities that made me larger, then what else is possible? And if I didn't like it, I could change it. Mm -hmm. But to change it, I had to change me. I had to change the way that I saw it. I had to take the eraser and give myself permission to erase the line. Mm -hmm. So I have a, I have a whiteboard that sits next to me over here and I have like what my workout is. So I put on there certain things and I put a check mark beside it. I put a date beside it. And each time I have a marker and then each week that goes by, I erase that week because it's, it's I no longer can I live on the accolades of yesterday because today's a new day. And if I really intentional, this is what a blank slate is. It's, it's being intentional with the life that I desire. Maybe not the life that I have right now. Maybe it's, it's an extension, but as, as we look at, let's just take finance for one. Most people overestimate what they need to live on. And then they accept way less than what they're worth. And if you just let that sink for just a minute, you know, they, I hear, you know, I want to be a millionaire. Have you been, have you made 50,000 yet? No, then why don't, why don't you set your sights on something that, okay, the million, yes, but let's get to the 50,000. Let's see what we can duplicate there. What would you do? Well, and I think interesting point there too, Stanley, is like, who decided you want to make a million dollars? Is it because someone on the internet told you you should be making a million dollars? Right. Or is it because, like, I actually did this exercise at the beginning of last year, and I was like, if I bought everything I wanted, Every, which includes things like a swimming pool and fresh flowers every week and a golf membership for my husband and like all of these things that are like we don't have right now, they would be nice to have. And I added it. I, I included all of those things and I added it up and it came up to just short of $200,000 a year. And I was like, when we look at, like you said, when we look at what it would take to make our lives, not even just like livable, but glorious, it's not that much and then we get caught up in like oh well okay i need to make a million dollars which means i need to make this amount of money a month and now i'm making zero a month and i have to go from zero to this a month and you're like that's not right. and nobody did that anybody who's a millionaire today didn't do that even if you're an actor and you ended up making millions of dollars as an actor you did a bunch of terrible work that you probably didn't want to <laughs> first Okay. And then you got there. And if you know your reason behind wanting to achieve that thing, you can work it back and say, okay, well, I want to achieve this thing. And this is what I want to be able to do. And like, even like my husband and I made a deal. If between the two of us were making more than $200,000 a year, we donate it to charity, right? Like that, because we don't need more than that. We don't need a yacht. We don't need a this and that. We 
that includes us spending like twenty thousand dollars a year on travel right so like this is that's all we need and so we can give the rest back my husband has a very fun uh perspective on money actually is that there should be no more billionaires allowed in the world and every dollar over a billion dollars that you make gets donated <laughs> to a useful cause um on a side note if anybody wants to follow him on that you should um it's no the point is knowing why you're doing it is also a critical component in these things because if you're just picking a random thing which i'll be honest i did for a long time and okay i'm gonna pick this random amount of money i'm gonna make every month and then i wouldn't and that's because i didn't care about that amount of money and there were other things that I cared about, but when I tied them into each other and I got to show up and do things that I care about in order to facilitate that, there's a different like personal commitment you make to it. And the ability to do that is facilitated by this concept of being able to have a blank slate every day. Yeah. So you can look at what you're doing now and be like, okay, I'm tracking in this direction. Is that a direction I even care about going. When I was 36 years old, I quit my VP job at a tech company, which I could have kept for my entire career because it wasn't taking me where I wanted to go. Right. And I've had so many people who have said to me, like, that must have been the hardest decision you ever made. And I was like, it was close to the easiest decision right. I ever made, actually. Right. Um, I There are many more. Sometimes I feel like what I want to have for lunch is a harder decision than yeah. that. Like yeah. it was just so clear to me. And when you have those moments, this is where it's so powerful to be able to just say like, okay. And like where Stanley started, not, I don't think I'm starting from scratch. I have a lot of knowledge. I have a lot of expertise, but I know I don't want to go in that direction. I need to change directions. I don't know what direction that is, but Hey, let's, wipe off the whiteboard and say, what can we do today? What can we accomplish today? And then at the end of the day, we're like, what felt good about that? What did I like? What felt like, no, I don't want to go through another day like that again. And we iterate on that, which is, again, I think this concept of iteration is maybe something that a lot of people have heard in the tech capacity, but this is a thing that we have when we have that skill to create a blank slate every day. It's, we iterate that's that's what we're doing yeah yeah we have two voices in our head and most people listen to that critic and it is the you know when people start to say things like i should have i should do this i should do this and i should do that i i usually allow them the opportunity to say should four, five or six times. And then I say, when you quit shooting all over yourself, you might be able to see clear. So you shooting all over yourself is getting you what result? It's making me feel bad. It but I think, but also don't you think partially in society, this is what we get trained to do? Oh my gosh, we run on a program based on like the entire education system and a lot of parenting is about shooting, right? Like even myself this morning. So you guys might have seen Nicholas. <laughs> He's homesick today. And I'm like, ah, I got a live. I got a podcast recording. I have a networking lunch I'm supposed to go to. This is a terrible day <laughs> for him to be sick in terms yeah. of my schedule. But I could look at it from a, Ugh, like, how do I deal with this situation? Or I look at it like, okay. What are the possibilities here? Right. <laughs> what are we going to be able to do together today that we weren't going to be able to do if he was at school and I was at all of these things? And most of the things are reschedulable. So maybe this is what is supposed to happen today. How and sensitive <laughs> can your child be to not be sick on a more convenient day? Right. <laughs> right. But like, how many times do we th like we think those thoughts, right? Like this is very <laughs> convenient. But like, and he, like he's sick, right? Like he is not. He's usually like pretty good at like putting on a strong face even when he's feeling sick, and he is sick today. So no, I'm not gonna make you go to school, even though it's like it's hot lunch day. I paid for you to have hot lunch, and now your hot lunch is gonna go to school, and you're not gonna eat it. Right. <laughs> like, right. 
none of that actually matters, right? Like, sure, is it an, an annoyance? Yes, but what is more important to me is that my kid feels taken care of when he feels sick. Right. <laughs> because that's what I desire as a human, which I'll be honest, in the whole momming scenario, it's <laughs> very uncommon for moms to actually get taken care of when they are sick. The best case scenario is usually like, people leave you alone. <laughs> um, right. But I feel like this is just another one of those things that it's very easy to get caught up in the programming of like, yeah, okay, now, and now I got to do stuff, right? I got to reschedule this and I got to do this and I got to do this and I got to do this. Or I can be like, and it's not that you don't have to do things, right? We're not necessarily saying like, hey, no, like I actually rescheduled my podcast recording for a different day. I did that already today. Right? And I've been messaging with the like networking coordinator just to be like, hey, I'm trying to figure this out, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Can I like just like use my ticket a different time, blah, blah, blah. And I'm supposed to have a client meeting after that. And we were going to meet in person because we were both going to be at the networking event. But if I don't go to the networking event, then that doesn't work. And like, there's lots of things. And I'm not saying that you won't have to deal with things in your life. I had to deal with my dad's car being frozen on my driveway for five days. And I felt like we got close to the 10,000 ideas that we tried <laughs> to make that work, but it didn't work. Um, but there's like, I want to kind of go back because there's something you touched on at the beginning, Stanley, that I think makes sense to focus on in this conversation is the difference between doing first yeah. and being first. Yeah. And I had someone explain it to me once in that most people think that be, have, do, or do, have, be exists from like, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to have money, and then I'm going to be happy. That, that That's the exactly. linear progression model that most people are working on. Yeah. But yeah, most there's people an opportunity to flip that to be first. Yes. Most people have the idea because they've been entrained of being on this program of doing and having. If and I study hard, then I have the right grades and then I will be smart. Then I'll be happy because then I'll be, I'll be hireable. But right. what is the identity of the person? So the, you know, I, I reference most of my life around what the Bible says. And from the very, very beginning, it says, be fruitful do take care of the garden and have dominion. So if you be, who am I becoming? What is the identity that I'm becoming? What is a person that has those things? Okay. So has is the last. What is the, what is the identity that the person that has those things, what's their identity? Who are they becoming? Who do they have to be? to have those things. What is the mindset of a person that is becoming that millionaire? Do they spend every dime that they, that they earn? Does money burn a hole in their pocket? Do they, do they go to the grocery store and buy all the candy and give it to all their friends? I mean, I, I envision that when, and I can picture that when I was a kid, is that I was gonna go out and make some money lawn mowing I was going to go to the store and I was going to buy a bag full of candy and I was going to bring it to the playground and pass it out. Okay. Now, what was, what was the identity of that person? If I break it down, why was I, why was I wanting to do that? Because that person in my mind was a, a gracious and also a, a person that expressed gratitude and the ability to, to have, but my identity was um, somebody that shared, somebody that was giving. Okay, that was the identity behind the motive to, to be able to do that, to be able to go and purchase and to be able to, to have the opportunity to give. The identity was a person of gratitude, a person of giving um, graciousness. And it was, it was an identity that I wanted to create. So who, who did I have to be? Who did I need to be to be able to do those things? First, I had to have a 
greater reflection of who I am. What is the identity? Who am I becoming as, as I do those things? What is my identity? People know me as a gracious, um, if, if you say you need help, I'm there to help. You know, if you're going through a tough time, um, I really have like an open kind of policy with my clients. If they've got a 911, they can reach me. And, you know, sometimes at, at my, at my, um, it, it's not always convenient. Right. You know, I've had people when I was in the church call me at one in the morning and a person that I've never met is ready to take their life and they're willing to take one phone call and they would call me and that happened more than once. And the reason is because my identity was that I could actually speak into not just theoretically, but in a practical, practical sense and go, what is it that you want? I want a blank slate is what they were really saying. You know, I want to start over. But what if you just started again instead of starting over? And we changed, we changed the words. When, mm -hmm. we, when we start again, that means we have at least crumbs. We have at least the ingredients, some of them. You know, if, if, I'm, making, if I'm making chicken casserole and I don't have a chicken, okay, what do I do? Do I throw out the ingredients? No. I just go to the store and buy a chicken. Or you can make a turkey casserole or you can make a vegetable casserole. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it, it, it is, I don't have to start over, but I can start again and take the experiences that I have, have acquired and implement them into the present moment. And who knows, it may turn out even better than what I imagined. And if that doesn't work, you can always you know, pull up that pizza place that serves cauliflower crust and, you know. Well, and one of the things this is also making me think of, Stanley, I, was, I used to do this show called the Be a Human in Business show. And we had a life coach on once as guest. And my whole life, I considered being competitive part of my identity. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just like part of who I was. And in that conversation, she challenged that. Like, what if that wasn't true? And I love to play a good what if game. So I was like, oh, what if that isn't true? And I wouldn't say that I'm like not competitive at all. Like if I'm riding my Peloton, I rode my Peloton at the same time as Dan Roth, who was also on LinkedIn the other day. And I was like, I'm beating him. <laughs> um, eh. And so it's, it's not completely non-existent, but it was a really interesting blank slate moment. Cause I was like, what if I, that wasn't who I am? Like, what if I just thought that was who I am? Because that's kind of how I've been trained to be. Yeah. I've been trained to be competitive. But when I look at like small infants, right? Like, are these people innately competitive? But I think they're trained to be competitive. And we, and there's lots of things that are like subtle training, right? We play sports and there's competition and we have to compete for jobs and we have to compete for grades and we have to compete in a lot of the societal arenas. So we get taught our beliefs about competition. I believe in competition. I don't believe in competition. But when we have those moments and those insights from other people and we allow them to create space for us to ask ourselves those questions and, and get curious about ourselves to be like, oh, is that me? Because Sally, when you talk about like your generosity and your sharing, like I've experienced that from you. So I know that that is, that's, a, that's part of you. And whether you're, whatever capacity you're showing up in, that that lives within you. But I also know that like for me and why this example comes up is that there are lots of times where I am, I don't believe in competition. I believe in collaboration. I believe in collective contribution. I don't believe in competition. So then it's an opportunity for me to look, well, is that like, yeah, okay, maybe historically I was making a decision. What would the competitive person do? And I won a lot, right? I won a lot. I won jobs. I won awards, I, I won stuff and it 
I don't know. It, like I, I, I was going to say it was nice, but it was mostly irrelevant, right? Like it didn't mean anything to me because I'm actually not, I have no desire to be competitive in those arenas. I have every desire to be myself. And so I, that was a, what might seem like, I don't know if Catherine is watching this or if Catherine will ever watch this, but I don't know if she knows that she changed my life that <laughs> in a conversation like this, because I was like, wow, what if I wasn't competitive? And it's led me into like a wonderful direction that feels like a much better representation of who I am. And so sometimes when it comes to the creation or the opportunity to create a blank slate, it's also in those insights that we get from other people who can challenge our ways of thinking. And we allow ourselves not to give too much ego to like, well, that's the way I am, right? Nope. I'm just that way. I am that way. And there's nothing that can be done about it. And if you decide to own that, like if that's really like, no, I am a giving person and there's no way we're ever changing that, then good, right? You're making that conscious decision. But sometimes those decisions have been made for us. And it's really interesting to be able to challenge that because I think in those scenarios, it's a really cool opportunity for a blank slate. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think on that line of competition, it's who are we in competition with? Are we in competition with ourself to further our progress or are we in competition based on a comparison? And I love pushing myself. I mean, I have markers on, on a board and I've done 45 of these exercises. And I'm going, I was maxed out. Can I do 47? Because the, the greatest growth is always in the last three. It's not in the first 10. Mm -hmm. It's not even in the first 15. It's in the last three or four. When we're, when we're pushing our body to that, to that limit where it's uncomfortable, you know, it's, it's going from that, that 15 seconds in the cold shower to 30 seconds. And then from 30 seconds to a minute. And then from a minute and, you know, you just graduated up and, you know, at you get to that five and a half minute mark and yeah, a shower is different than a cold plunge. But at the same time, it's what I have. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to compare it with somebody who's doing a cold plunge. I'm doing something that is shocking my body and releasing energy and changing what my my enzymes and my protons and my proteins and my neurohormones are all doing and I'm changing my brain. And if I change my brain, then I change the way that I think. And now I can go to that blank sheet of paper and I can start to write before I get, before I get influenced by anything on the outside, before I even consider what bill is due today before I consider what conversations I'm going to have outside, I have to have first this blank slate. What is the conversation that I'm having with myself? So in closing, I want to say this. I'm sure sooner or later, there's going to come a person that's going to come across this, this presentation, this talk and say, but you don't know my life. And I say, yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know your life. Only you do. But there is no one thing that you have done. There's no one thing that somebody has experienced that defines you for the rest of your life. And it doesn't even have to define you today. And, you know, I go back and watch these and I look like this. I got this serious look on my face. This is just who I am. All right. So, um, I'm going to make today what today is intended to be. And if I don't get everything done, who was I throughout the day? Who did I show up for me that I can show up better for someone else? And who knows? Maybe it'll be a year from now that somebody will comment. They'll come across this by accident. I want to say it's by divine appointment. I say it's a coincidence. It's a it, coincidence is a divine collision of an instance that comes together at the exact moment that you need it to. And don't ask me to say that again. 
because it's just watch the replay. Watch the replay. I'm going to have to go back and watch the replay. I'm going to go back and like my own video. All right. (laughs) That was so good. Good job, (laughs) self. Yeah. I'm going to buy my own CD. (laughs) So anyway. But um, I think Stanley, if I can, there's a couple of things that I'm thinking of just in in your closing thought is that I read this book. uh, Now the name of this is escaping me, but um, when my husband and I went to visit Alcatraz, they have some books there that are written by historic like prisoners. And there is a book that we got and it's this, this like the story of this guy's life, which is crazy. Right. And then he becomes a criminal and he has a terrible, like traumatic upbringing. And then you're like, it's not really a huge shocker that this guy turned into a criminal. Um, but he ended up so he ended up becoming like at the time the world's leading expert in x-ray technology. And so and he built all like he started building his knowledge and the experience of it in the prison hospital. And then when he finally got out, he like took the certifications and everything and then was like the the leading researcher and everything in x-ray technology. And I always just feel like that's such a good example of the blank slate because for a long time, he let people tell him that that's who he was and that was who he was going to be. And then in his example, he found God and that was something that brought him to new revelations about himself and and whether that's that is not the path that everybody treads and nor is it supposed to be the path that everybody treads but there are opportunities in other people and other stories that can allow you to create that blank slate and on a more lighthearted note um nicholas is very into the peloton right now which is a stationary bike for those of you who don't know and he's made these index cards of resistance and cadence so he can like tell us what we should be writing <laughs> he's too small um awesome. and this morning we wrote them in marker so it's like on paper written in marker and he decided he wanted to change one of the numbers from 26 to 27 so we took some white out we waited out the six and he wrote in a seven and from a blank slate perspective, it just was something that seemed so timely because even if we think when Stanley was holding up the paper, I was like, and we're always writing in pencil. That's what I was thinking in my head. But then I was saying, well, even if we've written in pen or marker or what have you, that does not mean it's not erasable and we can't go back and write it again. Um, So I just wanted to leave everybody with that because whether or not you think you've written all of these things about you and who you are and your life and what it's going to be in pen. That's why they invented whiteout, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that. I love that. All right. Well, fantastic. Um, It has been a pleasure and I am excited about those that are listening and those that will get this copy. And we look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Imagination, The Awakening. Have a fantastic day. Thanks, everyone.